just got home, made a cup of tea. Now, tea, I like loads of tea, but if you put one of them, a tea bag of that, and a tea bag of that in the same cup, I'll tell you what, that is pleasantly surprising. The girlfriend's like, oh, that'll be minging. Tried it, she's like, actually, all right, fair dues, it's lovely. So we just got in from the snow, and I just thought I'd mention a little bit about aeration because it's that time of year. Um, I, it's snowing today, it's pretty cold. But I just got in, I'm writing up today's notes from the job. We get asked endless times about um, aeration and bits and pieces, and obviously, once again, it varies water to water. Everywhere's different and it's uh, difficult to generalize, but something, I mean, diffusion, uh, you know, diffusion systems, just simple air blowing, blowing air about, that's become really popular in recent years. And personally, I think a lot of it is down to the fact that people don't really like to have um, splash aerators and things like that, where they make noise and they upset anglers or whatever, people get caught up with them. So people do tend to, you know, a lot of clubs we go to, they'll put these diffusion systems in, which I can't, don't know why they're spending so much having them fitted when you can do it, do it really, really quite, quite easily um, with the right diffuser. For me, it's all about the actual diffuser, the, 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 the actual unit you're using. Uh, Dryden um, sort of sausage long diffusers are the best ones, but they're very expensive, but you can buy um, cheap alternatives to that. A lot of them are run on stones and like the, the bits and pieces, but you're pushing air around it. it had, they have their uses, they're not doing any harm whatsoever, blah, 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 but, you know, they work They work okay in really, really deep water, but in shallow water, you, f for the electric cost now, which you've got to bear in mind, you're just pushing a bit of air around. And I'd argue that aeration for me should only be adopted when you need it, therefore buying an oxygen meter is much more beneficial than buying an, an aerator initially because you can identify, you can see patterns, you can, you know, over the course of the, the initial months of the summer, spring and summer, when things start to change, cold water holds more oxygen naturally. So in the winter, I don't check, I don't check the oxygen unless there's a problem, um, because it's gonna be high, because the water water's cold, so the oxygen is normally high. Not every time, but most of the time. Don't bother checking water quality very much in the winter, because it's pretty much a waste of time, unless there's reasons why it won't be, you know, but in general, Cold water, not much fish activity, not a lot going on, therefore the water is normally absolutely fine. As it starts to warm up, you want to be monitoring your oxygen. So many places we go, have an aerator running full time, and you say, why have you got that on? Oh, it fishes better when it's on. Okay, what's the oxygen? What's the dissolved oxygen rate average for the last month? No idea, they haven't got an oxygen meter. So, and pe more and more people are going to be taking heed of all this sort of stuff because oxygen, because the electric's going up by half, like tomorrow. So that's gonna, clubs that are just running them on, you know, and most of the time they don't need them on, that's the thing. You only want you, you only want uh, any sort of artificial aeration if you, if you if your dissolved oxygen is regularly above sort of, you know, uh, sorry, below sort of three milligrams per litre, um, in my opinion, because, you know, the fish will feed, feed at that. And a lot of places in the summer, they'll be at that anyway, and you'll still be catching fish. But if it drops below that, that's kind of our warning warning trigger, really. We always say people who are feeding as well, or, or got heavy, real high biomass, you know, if it drops below three and a half, that's when you want to look at, have I got emergency aeration ready? Um, and as long as you've got something in place ready, and I just think, if you haven't got electric, lots of places haven't got electric. So like a long run diesel generator and a splash aerator for me, personally is the best option because you can just deploy it real quick real easy um some of these long run diesel generators will run 24 hours and you can run you know one horsepower or two horsepower uh two separate aerators off off a jenny we've done it before at a number of fisheries and it works really really well but only in emergency i wouldn't have them on all the time I, there's no need if you've just got oxygen aeration on all the time a you've got no backup there and you're you're relying on it uh, too much and there's always reasons there's always reasons. So I wouldn't look straight away at spending money on aeration equipment. I'd look at environmental factors first. I'd look at, is there as much, you know, within reason, is there as much wind getting on the lake as, as, as possible? And if you're dead against addressing that situation, all right, then you're going to look at others. So you're going to look at aeration because if you're not willing to accept the fact that, you know, a lake that's got decent light wind penetration is a lot better, um, a lot more productive than one that hasn't, um, long term over a period of years um, you know you need to kind of understand that initially 
obviously marginal plants. If, you've, if you're like surrounded by bramble and trees and there's very little marginal plants, address that situation. If you want to keep all the snags in and you want to keep all the metal and the crap in the lake, fine, but, but start looking at little areas where you can improve it and put marginal plants in because they are an absolute amazing thing to have in your lake. You know, they're doing so many, I'm not going to bang on about it because I always do. But yeah, there's so many benefits to, to using decent marginal plants in your lake um, that if you haven't got them, if, if, like I say, if you look around your lake now and it's, and it's just bramble and crap and, and stuff, you know, natural, that's fine, but integrate marginal plants as well because the benefits are huge. So then you're left with aeration. And if you're going to have aeration, like I say, I'd just use a person. You can, again, and people use splash, um, things like four sevens and all these little other tiny bits and pieces. They're fine. But, but the main reason I find asking clients and, and other people why they won't use it is you want to you want to kick water around. You know, you want to really kick some water around when it's hot, if you need to, only if you need to. But you really want to push it around. And for me, a splash aerator is fantastic. I used to put all my faith in paddle wheels back in the day, years and years and years ago. But I think for, things have really moved on. Diffuser systems, fine, you know, better than nothing. But I just don't see them doing as much as a, as a splash. I really don't. And, but they're very, very popular because people don't like the fact that they've got to have something fixed there. Uh, anglers get caught up on it and all this and the other. But they don't do as much good as uh, decent surface aeration. And things like the, the four sevens and things like that, you know, we've got one on the, the newer um, um, stock pond at the Carp Society. And it's great, it's silent, it kicks the water around, it's great. I don't think it's, I think if you put a splash on there, it would, it would, it would serve a little bit, it would be a bit more efficient, certainly. But again, uh, if you've got really weak banks and you can't plant them, then if you've got a tiny pond and a whacking great big aerator, it's going to aid erosion. So you, there's lots to think about. It's not just a case of, oh, we'll just chuck an aerator, turn it on, have it running all the time. Um, because that's that's ludicrous. You're wasting money. You've got no backup if it goes wrong. But I do go to a lot of places where they've just got permanent aeration on all the time. You're learning nothing at all. You're just relying on it completely, which you shouldn't be. You know, it should be an emergency aid. It should be something that, that you've got. You know, if you've got too many fish and they're relying on that aeration, you're managing your fishery wrong. Because, you know, you should be adjusting your stock levels. You should be doing, there's loads of other things you should do so you're not relying on emergency aeration. But that said, it's a very, very useful thing. And, and you know, you are up against um, the climate. You know, the, the weather's ever changing. And uh, we are getting uh, less water at different times of year. You're getting a lot of problems with, with algal blooms. And again, plants can help that. But yeah, all these things are worth bearing in mind. It's not just a case, you know, we, a lot of places they don't understand fish. They just buy tons of fish, stick them in. Oh, I need an aerator, tick that box, chuck one on, done. And then they wonder why they have loads and loads of problems. All right, dog, wants me to throw a ball. So yeah, it's just just quickly touching on that. It's, it's going to get to that time of year real quick when as soon as it starts to get warm, fish will start spawning, the phone will go mad, people are losing fish. Oh, we've tried this, we've tried a potion, we've tried a dye, we've tried all this, our fish are dying. And there's lots you need to do. And like I keep saying, you know, it does start in the winter. You, you, your prep work starts in the winter. Once you've assessed your biomass, once you genuinely know what, what's in there. We've done a lot of work. God knows how many we've done. I'll count them all up this winter. But we are, we've been out every day. And so many places say, well, no one fishes that lake because there's no silver fish in there. Well, the anglers don't. And we net it and there's loads. Just because they're not getting caught doesn't mean they're in there. Um, you know, you've got, you've got uh, predation and, and oxygen problems to deal with. And, and they're, they're, they're two really, really big issues, really. A water quality and predation. If you can get the, if you can suss those two and, and do do as much as you can um, in readiness for the summer to make your fish happy. If your fish aren't stressed, they'll eat more. If they eat more, you'll catch more. Anglers only catch fish um, when they're feeding, obviously. So you want the fish to be eating. So the more you can get them to eat, the more you can get them happy to feed, the anglers catch them. That's it. You know, if, if, if the if lake's getting plundered by predation and the water quality's crap um, and the oxygen, or the water, you know, the oxygen's dipping, it's all up and down all over the place, they're not going to feed as much as they would if they were happy. So there's a real fine line. I like a balance. I like, I like a, a natural lake with tons of plants about, you know, and plenty of trees and everything, but a balanced and a managed environment where, you know, you, you can eliminate as many common problems as possible because there's still going to be other problems. Anglers. <laughs> You know the environmental factors, like we discussed, like 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 the weather. Basically, you know you can't you can't do anything about that, but you can do an awful lot 
to stop a lot of problems coming into the first part of summer. Happens every year, the usual suspects panic, lo lose loads of fish, and then just ring someone up and order a load more fish. They're learning nothing, it's not the way to manage or run a fishery, and I mean, it's, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be uh, promoted at all. That's, that's not how to run a fishery. It's not how to manage a sustainable and decent fishery in this day and age. Just constantly restocking if you've got a problem or if you think there's no fish or if the anglers aren't catching, it's not the answer. And it doesn't matter if it's a carp lake, a match lake, it's not the answer. We've proved so many times every year that the answer is to look at what you've got, look at any issues and learn and understand and don't arc back to the dark ages and don't say 50 years ago it was X, Y and Z because we're not there now, we're here. And, you know, a lot of angling clubs and a lot of private fisheries are being a lot more proactive nowadays and that's great. And that's what we try to encourage. Why do you choose now to chew that? That's so noisy. Um, yeah, yeah, thanks for that. Anyway, I'm gonna get changed and write this report. I just thought I'd have a little rant today and I hope that helps at least one person. Bye. So the last couple of days ago, we were in t-shirts. And uh, up north that was. And now we're only an hour from home. And it's changed a little bit. <laughs> Snoo. <laughs> Snoo joke. But uh, yeah. Oh, bloody. Wish it was a bit more global warming today. Crazy weather. <laughs>